ओम नमो लोए सर्वतिकावर्ती हरियंताम ओम नमो लोए सर्वतिकावर्ती सिद्धाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वतिकावर्ती आयरियाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वतिकावर्ती ओज्जायाणम ओम नमो लोए सर्वतिकावर्ती सावनम ओंकार बिंदु संयुक्त नित्यम ध्यान के योगिन कामद मोक्षदम शैव ओंकार नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूतिया चकाशते चीत स्वभावाय भावाय सर्वभावादे आज्ञानतिरंजान ज्ञान अंजन सदाकया चक्षुन्मीत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तीर्थंकर जगतना जयवंत ओंकार नाद जिननो जयवंत वर्तो जिन न समो शरण सौ जयवंत वर्तो ने तीर्थ चार जगम जयवंत वर्तो नमूए तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संघ रुते नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने अहोपकार जिन वरनो कुंद नो ध्वनि दिव्य नो जीन कुंद ध्वनि अहो ते गुरु काननो अहो भगवती मातनो ध्रुव अचल मे अनुपम गति पेल सर्वे सीधन वंदी कहो सुत केवल बासित आसमय प्राभृत अरे हूँ एक सुध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मय खरे कई अन्य ते मारु जरी परमाणु मात्र नथी अरे जम नेत्र ते मज ज्ञान नथी कारक नथी वेदक अरे जाने जकर मोदय निरजरा दंड ते मज मोक्ष ने ओ जय जय टुडे इज अ नवंबर 23 2020 मंडे एंड वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर क्लास ऑन अ बेसिक आई मीन आत्मसिद्धि एंड वी आर इन द स्टांजा 7 अ फ्यू ऑफ द थिंग्स वी विल रिकैपिटुलेट क्विकली एंड देन वी विल कंटिन्यू गोइंग सो लेट मी ब्रिंग द स्लाइड्स एंड देन वी विल टॉक फ्रॉम द टाइम वेयर वी वर लेफ्ट आउट बिफोर and some of the thing we'll just uh, cover up which we convert uh, which we covered last time you know uh, where is that thing okay so we were over here somewhere on this slide yes you are not there last time so we'll we we'll, for you will keep recapitulate quickly so simad ji different places said eligibility eligibility is word is probably predominantly he is using it in the sense what he tries to tell us that what is the eligibility for a person to obtain samyak darshan so in different places he has said different times and for example He says at one point he says forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, and non-attachment state is the reason for this eligible thing for one to get some meditation. Other places he says to have indifference toward worldly affairs, detachment from sensual pleasure, diminished nature of unity with the physical body, diminished toxic emotions. That will be the reason for eligibility. Third place he says broad-mindedness. equanimity straight straight forwardness winning over the senses means vishal buddhi madhyasthata saralta jitendriyapana that has to be eligibility and other places he says restraining the mind from toxic emotion only wish for liberation tiredness from the transmigration compassion towards living beings all living beings and faith in the omniscient message in some samvek nirvan astha anukampa so different places he just uses different way to explain to us eligibility 
how one can get eligibility. If we dissect it, basically they mean the same thing in general. In, in general, it means same thing like this first bullet, forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non-attachment. Means, these are kind of new words appears to us, but if we know that they're not new words, they're actually, we use it day in and day out. What are the toxic emotions I have? Four types of toxic emotions. And right away you'll say, when in the middle of night, when you're deep sleep, and I say, tell me the four names of the toxic emotions, and you will say, anger, deceit, ego, greed. Char kashai kaya che, krodh man maya lo. Right away you will say that. And so these are the exact opposite of those four uh, toxic emotions one can have. Forbearance is exactly opposite of anger. Straightforwardness is uh, uh, exactly opposite of a deceitful nature. Simplicity is actually a, 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 a opposite of egoic state. And non-attachment is uh, opposite of attachment. So to control anger, deceit, ego, greed, that means to have forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, or non-attachment. Remember, these are my own natural state. Forbearance, straightforwardness, simplicity, non-attachment. Actually, if you see Daslakshan Dharma, Daslakshan Dharma is means 10 virtues of the soul. Religion for the 10 virtues of the soul. Those 10 virtues. Kshama, Madhav, Arjav, Satya, Saut, Sanyam, Tap, Tyag, Akinjana, Brahmacharya. Those 10 names, for example, first four are basically exactly opposite of anger, deceit, you greed, or forbearance, straight, forbearance, simplicity, and non attainment state. So once one has control of his emotion, toxic emotions, then he becomes eligible for receiving the um, um, uh, scriptural message. Now, same thing, let, let's see, that, 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 I think that's what he's going to, okay, broad mind, yeah. So to have indifferent toward worldly affair means you just don't get too much excited or about having the uh, aversion to the worldly states. Why president should not uh, just say that uh, I lost? Who cares? What difference does it make in your life? He, whether he remains, he remains as president or he gives, what difference does it make? So sometimes, so that kind of indifference toward worldly affairs. I may have, I will have open the newspaper or news on the internet and we had comment on everything. Why? Why, what difference does it make? It only spoils my mind. Nothing happened to the president or president-elect. It only just kills my mind. It makes my mind dirty. So have indifference towards worldly affair. Detachment from sensual pleasure means I cannot live without such and such thing. Five senses I have, an object of five senses, I can't live without, without those things. I, can't, I don't have radio in my car. Are you nuts? How can you live? One day, one time I found, I met one person and he was really, I mean, you know, he wanted to save money from every angle. So he went to the car showroom and says, I want a car without radio. And they say, are you nuts? Get lost, car radio is must. Who says it's must? Because it's my listening pleasure, that's why it has to be there. So my listening pleasure, my visual pleasure, my sensual pleasure in the form of sense, I mean, a smell and touch and taste and everything. You, one, one starts getting detached from it. And no, what a better time than what we are going through it right now, coronavirus and everything, 
our requirements have become limited with minimal thing we can leave. Sure, I mean, you have to go to work, you go to work and everything, but rest of the other fancy stuff, oh, you know, I mean, every Friday night, I got to go to restaurant to take a dinner. How many times did you go in last six, eight months? And did you die? Did you, did your life change? No, in fact, life became better. So those kind of determine for sensual pleasure. Diminished nature of unity with the physical body. Physical body associated being, if I just, just barely maintain my body, that's more than emotion. And similarly, diminished toxic emotion control. So the, the second one also turns out the same as first one. Then this last two, we quickly just go through it. Broad-mindedness, equanimity state, straightforward, straightforwardness, wearing over senses, vishal buddhi, madhyasthata, saralta, jitendriyapana. This, this four sentence, this four things from Kupal Dev is very famous that people really, really talk a lot about it. So let, let, let's say broad, broad money, vishal buddhi means what? One who has broad mind for accepting the truth. Truth is multifaceted. So there is not one facet of the truth. So you analyze the truth for multifaceted, multi-angle and try to understand. Soul is an eternal soul substance. But soul also has a mode. And in that mode, I end up making auspicious inclination inauspicious inclination. So what are the inauspicious inclination? I should know about it. I should study about it. What are the auspicious inclination? I should study about it. And then what's the eternal soul substance, what it can do and what, what it cannot do. So that kind of broad mind, I have to have it. You know, lots of places, some places when I go, someplace I go, and then when I go there, they say, oh, the guy from the absolute point of view came here. So I, I'm been known as a guy from area. What does it mean? That's a facet of the reality. You have to know it. You can't ignore that one. Oh, ye to bhakti wala aaya. Means if the guy keeps on singing and singing and singing bhajan, that's it. He may or may not know the meaning of those things. So don't have that narrow mindedness. Don't label people, but try to understand reality from different people. So it's broad mindedness. Broad mind for accepting the nature of reality as it is. Uh, 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 understand that the eternal soul substance as eternity perspective. Understand the modal perspective, which is transient in nature. Understand both and accept both. He has vast mind and not any narrow mindedness. This adjective is for the worthy soul. All this, this broad mindedness is been said for the worthy soul. If you are the worthy soul, means you are eligible to obtain some darshan for those kind of people, those kind of souls, these kind of adjectives are used. One has to have broad broadness in cognitive knowledge. Means his, his, his horizon should be very farly broad. Actually, if you think about it, most of the bullets are making the same sense, making the same thing from different angles. One has to one has, one who has inquisitiveness to accept the discourses of the learned saying, "Yes, it's a difficult because I don't understand." I have not, I did not make any efforts to understand the reality. Oh, these guys are difficult. I can't understand. I can't understand. No, don't do that. Try to make yourself ready to understand those things. And there's beautiful things are there in the scripture thereafter. So broad mindedness, equanimity state, madhyasthata means to understand a, to understand a given thing without any pre, prejudgment. You don't have prejudice. You accept, you understand, try to understand that one. To motive is to understand the reality in an objective form without any bias. 
to determine the truth in its complete form, don't accept the truth partially only. Accept the completeness. For example, we can say there are two poems that are uh, 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 Srimadji has written down. One is, He Prabhu, He Prabhu, Su Karu, Dina, Nath, Dayal, Hu To, Do, Shanan, No, Bhajan, Chu, Karan, Suddha, Bhav, Mujman, Nathi. Means every negative things are being mentioned in that one. What, 27 or something negativity are mentioned in that one. And they are all modal statement mentioned. Okay? I am I'm full of all this filth within me. I'm full of fault within me. I understanding that, but at the same time, I have room to improve from these faults too. So you have to understand complete form. Don't get stuck at one point only and then, then they say, oh, well, you know, I mean, I, I'm a dejected person. I'm a bad person. I have done lots of anger, DCD, go greed. No, you're not, you're not supposed to get depressed about it. Accept, keep going, and improve yourself. To be devoid of any person, preconceived idea about, uh, and the, to be free from any religious sex predetermined ideas. So uh, but, but when we have the, so many religious sects are there, oh, you are Swetambar means you have to be like that. Oh, you are Digambar means like that. Oh, you are Sthanakwasi means. So don't have preconceived ideas. Everybody is doing, you understand the basis for the religion. You don't have to worry about, don't get uh, in a narrow-minded sectarian uh, uh, concept. One has to have equanimity to know the truth in the true form. One acts according to his local custom and thereby acts with partiality. So these are the equanimity state. See, first one it says, Jitendriya First one was Vishal Buddhi, means broad mindedness. Second, equanimity state, Madhyastata. Now we'll say straightforwardness. Similarly, it will come, there are simple bullets are there. Straightforward, not to have preconceived ideas. In the past, he had done he had wrong impression, thereby cannot act with simplicity, nothing like that. I have wrong ideas, and now I'm a right ideas. Now the living being is a, he has given up ego and thereby ready to understand the reality. Modal sense is wrong sense, and it is a crookedness state. He does not hide his own fault. He is now ready to accept the eternal true nature of the self. Inclination towards the eternal self is the real nature of this eligibility. So, your inclination to the eternal self, this is my true state and I'm just inclined towards that, that's your greatest eligibility and that's your straightforwardness. And then, Jitendriya uh, Pana, we were on this slide actually when we completed, but we just uh, gone through some of the things in the back. So Jitendriya Pana means winning over the objects of senses. What does this word mean? Jit means to win. Indriya means senses, means one who has won over the senses. It's kind of word, it doesn't make any sense right now, but we can analyze that one. To have indifference towards the object of five senses. You, one has an indifference or object of five senses, my ocular objects, my ear or objects for the ear, objects for the nose, object for the taste, object for the skin. And the infinite objects are there. Just think about it. Anything that you can think about worldly object means it has relationship to one of the senses that you have it. I like this pencil, it's an it's a ocular object. I like certain music, it's an e object of the ears. I smell and a certain smell, certain taste, certain touch, all those things are object of So number one, winning of the object of five senses means to have 
in different stores object of five senses, number one, then initially knowledge used to get stuck into the sense, uh, intense fruition of karma. In, in, we, we are in the initial stages. That once, what's happening? The fruition of karma occurs and suddenly I get joined there. And as a result, I end up with the likes and dislikes. I like this thing, I don't like it, and everything is related to the physical senses. Thereby knowledge was getting associated with the greed. This knowledge was associated with the fruition of karma. That's why this knowledge had a greed with that. And when the faith deluding state becomes milder, then knowledge starts getting purer. Now, this is a concept is very important over here to understand. What it says, the first thing, karma fruition is there. Because of karma fruition, I, I just get stuck with that thing. So when I'm about when anger producing material karma comes in fruition and I become angry. Uh, greed producing material karma in fruition and I become greedy. So all the greedy means I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this means possessions. So now I have possessions. So when faith deleting karma becomes milder, means all this karma fruition becomes milder, then knowledge has a better chance to grab reality. In the sense, simple way of saying in this four bullets, if I am angry, I cannot have knowledge acceptance. Let's say that a, somehow you, one is angry and try to read and come, come home and say, okay, I'm going to read the book now. You cannot concentrate when you are angry, when you have tremendous deceitful nature, when you have egoistic state or when you have possessive state, anger, deceit, ego, greed. You cannot have the meaningful knowledge go through it. But when you calm down, your emotions are settled down. Now you read, and that reading becomes, I mean, that, that, that your retention is extremely great. That's why early morning after night's rest, you are early morning, you are fresh. Your thought process is quieted down. And now you just start doing your uh, uh, um, scriptural reading and or anything. You have amazing amount of retention ability. So that's your, that, that's what he tries to say. But Jitendriya Pana here, there's one more thing I would like to add over here. In a 31 stanza of Samaisa, it says Jitendriya Pana, this word Jitendriya Pana is there. What does it mean? It says three things. It says winning over senses goes into three, three, uh, three parts. One is a physical senses by itself. Eyes, ear, nose, taste, and tongue and skin. So physical senses by itself. Then second thing is object of physical senses. Object of physical senses. I like, I would like to watch that movie. I, I hate that movie. I don't like this. I don't I, I like this. I don't like that music. I like this music and so on and so forth. An object of all the five senses. So they, they are also called senses. So we are dividing senses and winning over the senses. Senses means uh, physical senses, object of physical senses, and third thing is very important. Listen carefully, because what it says, let's say there's a mango on a table. I'm looking at a mango. How did I know it's a mango? My eyes say that it's a bright yellow color, yellow orange color. So my eyes talk, talked about color. My nose smelled the smell. It's a sweet smell. My hand did the touching, touching, touch sensation. 
And he says, it's a soft to the nature. And Tong did the tasting and said, it's a sweet tasting mango. So what happened? A mango is completely sitting on the table and mango said that, hey, you know what? You know me perfectly. I, I'm giving my completeness to you so you know me completely. So mango said that I'm the object, you know me completely. And how did I know it? By my physical senses, by fragmentation way. I said that yellow, yellow color, no said the sweet smell, Todd said that the soft, and the tongue said that the sweet taste. So all these four different senses, they are giving fragmented knowledge of the whole mango. So when I'm looking at a mango, this is very kind of a very, very, very technical thing, but you will be able to understand. A mango is over here, and my eyes made in my knowledge more information that I has con conveyed, nose has conveyed, uh, tongue has conveyed, and skin has conveyed. So all these four guys are in my knowledge more in a fragmented way end up knowing an object. So when I, I perceive any knowledge in fragmented form, then also it's called senses. Fragmented form, fragmented form of knowledge. So senses means, 31st stanza of Samisa, physical senses, all five senses and mind, object of five senses and mind, and fragmented form of knowledge occurring in my knowledge mode. These are the three things are called um, um, senses, basically. And one, when one wins over the senses, then he's called Jitendriyapana. Jit means to win, Indriya means uh, bah, 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 senses. To completely winning over the senses means all three things has to happen. So that is called Jitendriyapana. So Kuprodi used very simple word, but he just used, so he, he, he gives tremendous meaning to that. It gave us, it gave us opportunity to review what the other, uh, other authors are saying, like Kunkun Acharya is saying in 31st hour, what he said, we came to know those kind of things. So one more thing, for eligibility, over here, let me show you one thing quickly. We, we just, this is God minded days, everything is done. done. Then uh, uh, um, uh, 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 we are just, uh, I mean, Jitendriyapana, uh, we have finished this part, right? So now we are going to the last bullet over restraining of mind from toxic emotion, etc. For eligibility purpose, what happens, that's what we are trying to see over here. For eligibility purpose, broad mindedness, equanimity state, straightforwardness, winning of the senses, and all these things, all four are supportive of each other for eligibility. So several different ways he is telling us what is eligibility. Somehow I have to cultivate those virtues within me. When I have those things in which I'm, 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 I'm kind of indifferent to the worldly object with the senses, etc. I remain in equanimity state. I don't get that much excited or that, that, that much depressed about it. In my, my life is straightforward and broad mindedness. Then they, I have the eligibility of us within me. Now, this is the uh, 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 buffalo. Uh, buffalo is uh, the ignorant type of buffalo. Buffalo is at, uh, eating all this grass. So what it says in this example, ignorance type of buffalo means I have ignorance and I'm like in the ignorant state, I'm like a buffalo and I eat some a grass of auspiciousness of, of auspicious of material, of, of material conduct. 
means I am the ignorant, this is me, ignorant state in all this auspiciousness over here, I eat it away and the transmigration remains the same and ego is increased. Means I am so much egoistic person with my auspiciousness. You know what? I can talk any subject, any place. Big deal. So what a big deal. What happened? So, so, so you know, so you know it. So what a big deal. Oh, I'm the multimillionaire guy. So what? Who cares about your money? Your money is not going to buy sandwich for me. I have to eat my own uh, with, with my own money. I have to buy the sandwich and etc. So over here, I don't want to have any ignorance and all the things. But I get the kind of because of this auspicious thing with the auspiciousness. I get an ignorant and I increase my ego. Nothing happens otherwise. On the name of spirituality, one ends up with body activities and thereby nourishes his wrong belief. I can do this. I can do so much upvas. I can do so many ekasan. I get this and that and everything about bodily activity. And thereby I'm nourishing wrong. So it remember, remember one thing. It, it doesn't say over here that do not do bodily activity or not to be done, or they are they're they are not they're not neglected, but it said when you do body activity and thereafter you think that you are doing something positive, something religious, that's a thing. That belief is called wrong belief over here. So your wrong belief needs to be checked out properly. So this wrong belief is very important. You to, one has to control the wrong belief. You have to change your belief from wrong to right belief. What's my wrong belief? What's my wrong belief since time infinite? I am the physical body, I am the physical body. That kind of attitude I have since time infinite is a wrong, wrong belief. I have a wrong belief. My attitude is towards the body and beyond. This body needs to be covered, so I need to have clothes, so I need to have better clothes, no worse clothes, average clothes, costly clothes, designer clothes. This body needs to be nourished. I need to have food, well, I need to have so much, I need to have, I need to have restaurant food, no, I need Chinese food, I need Italian, all these things that we just body and body related, all the objects. That's my wrong belief. Body is mine, body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. If I take that attitude away, you have some aggression right now. But it cannot happen overnight because we have this body is mine, body is mine, body is mine, that attitude I have since time infinite. When he was, I was in Nigod, eternal Nigod, I was there. And I was born and dead, dying every eight, 18 times in one second. One second I was dying 18 times. At that time also in Nigod, I used to say, body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. Right now, body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. So what's the difference between me and Nigo? Nothing, zip, zero. I need to remove my wrong belief. I need to take attention from the physical body. This gives bondage of auspicious karma. When I do physical activities, physical body, and uh, like ekasno, upvas, samai, pratikaman, and all those things when I do, then maybe at the most it can give me auspicious karma. Bondage of auspicious karma. And with that thing, maybe I'll end up with a celestial life. Okay, all right. So you become celestial life. Which you have done infinite times in the past. 
And if we don't do the right thing, we'll continue doing this one for time infinite coming in the future. And that's where my transmigration continues. I have not broken this toxic chain of transmigration because I do body activity, as a result, I have a wrong belief, as a result, I am binding auspicious karma, and the karma comes in fruition. I go to celestial life. Once the life is over there, then I go to again transmigration, uh, hell, heaven, subhuman, etc. One kind of liking for the non toxic nature of the eternal soul. One has to have liking for the the eternal soul substance. I am the eternal soul substance. I should know. I should know it. I am the all knower soul substance. I have to know it. I have to experience that one. One time, a person is watching the Kohinoor diamond in the museum in London, in the palace. When you go, go to London, go to palace. Ever go to the palace museum? They will show the Kohinoor diamond which is part of India, which was stolen from India. They say it was gifted, I mean, no. Anyway, so I'm looking at the diamond and you are with me and you say, you are local guy, you are the local London person and you just took me there. And then you said, Kirby, tell me what's the price of the diamond? What's the question you ask me? What could be the price of the diamond? Most costly diamond on the earth. What will be my answer? Do I tell you the price of the diamond or do I tell you the, my soul who is going to have knowledge about this diamond? So do I tell you about the soul's value or do I want to tell you about the value of the diamond? How much is a diamond's value? It all depends how you understand, how you digest that part. So that eternal soul's liking, that knowing occurs within me. This is a diamond over here. And here are my eyes. His eyes are looking at it. So the, the value of this diamond is decided by this eye. And eye means there's a, there's a knowledge behind the eye, knowledge mode, and the knowledge mode comes from knowledge attribute, and the knowledge attribute is coming from eternal soul substance. So who is valuable here? The diamond, or the one who ultimately makes decision about it. So one has to liking for the eternal soul substance. He has discretion towards the auspiciousness. Auspiciousness is occurring, but it is not my true nature. That kind of understanding I have to have it. For example, the dirty mirror is there foggy mirror is there, then you can't see the picture of this girl behind that mirror. The face is not properly seen in the dirty mirror. The living being is having impurity in his mind, thereby unable to witness the purity of the soul. As the mirror is dirty, we can't see the face behind. Similarly, when I have impurities in my whole soul, because of the impurities present, I cannot perceive the purity of my soul, which is hidden behind. So a living being has love for the worldly state. He has no, no liking for the nature of the true self. He looks for eternal objects of the world, but he does not look at his own eternal self. He does not know the all knower soul substance. With ignorance, he believes alien object as his own. He thinks that all the alien object, I, I see this pencil, this is mine, so that I have possession of this pencil and I have a possession of my phone, etc., etc. So 
all those knowledge is acquired by your all knows soul substance and i don't know that part that's my kind of uh, weakness that kupali dev is suggesting over here without internal renunciation external one has no value let's say you end up doing fasting today tomorrow day after four days eight days 16 days 8 one month 45 days you did that much external renunciation but internally there is no changes has occurred within me many years back they took me I was in bombay and they took me to one 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 suburb They say you know come here. I said what's happening? Well, the Mahasab has done 170 upvas. Okay, whole street is full of people. There's no place to walk. Somehow from the back door we enter with their permission of Mahasab and everything. And somebody told Mahasab. Hey, there are some people from America. They are here to see you. What was he doing? Reading newspaper. Are you doing upvas to read the newspaper, or are you doing upvas to strengthen your inner inner strength? So when you do act. Eternal renunciation, but it is not associated with softness of mind, etc. Internal state, it is no value. For example, let's say Muniraj, he has given up all the clothes and he is a naked saint, but he does not realize his soul substance at all. He has no samyak darshan. He has just become naked saint. Do I go and pray him? Do I go and do namaskar to him? If nudity is only the reason he or she can be called a, 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 a saint, if nudity is only the reason to be called as a saint, then all these animals, dogs and cats and cows and buffaloes and everything. All these animals, they don't wear clothes, so then they need to be respected as much as the Muniras can. You said, "Are you nuts? Come on! They are animals. They have no no idea. They have no faith. They have no knowledge." Here also, you do see the same thing. If that person has a right faith, right knowledge, right conduct, some meditation, some meditation, some meditation, and then he has also nudity in the form of monkhood, then he is respected person. So external renunciation has to have internal renunciation too. Yes, the external renunciation helps one to purify. Yes, it's true. When you have external renunciation, when you are given a clothes, when you are given nudity and everything, then it gives more time for you to purify your inclinations. Yeah, they are a stepping stone to purify your inclination. But in this external renunciation, I feel kind of very happy about it. I'm going nowhere. Nothing. My on trans migration continues one who is having intense internal intense of attachment as etc state then external renunciation are useless for him internally he may have intense anger deceit ego greed and externally he is a naked saint it means nothing it is useless so internal renunciation is very important Which with with that there will be an external uh, there will be external renunciation, but both the thing they have to go in hand in hand. That is very important. This is Kunkun Acharya. They wrote down in uh, uh, Astapahol 
in a chapter by Bhag Bahol, chapter stanza number three. Now, a bullock cart and a, a bull is pulling the cart. Actually, he's taking all this weight and etc. And uh, you know, if he's not walking enough, then he the the, 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 the driver also beats him with the stick, etc. etc. In if 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 an external suffering is the reason for liberation, in previous stanza we said external activity like taking clothes off, that is an external clothes we talk. Now we are taking external suffering. If external suffering is a liberation reason for liberation, then animal will get, will get liberation quickly because he is taking suffering by, like anything. They are loaded with the excessive weight. They are loaded, they, they, they roam around in the heat. They also suffer in the intense misery through the owner. So if only external suffering, you just said, I'm having external suffering. That's why I'm doing a, a religious thing. The, the, those things are refuted over here. If the renunciation is due to fear or due to greed, then it's useless. Now, there are three types of renunciation described in the literature. Knowledge-based renunciation, fear-based renunciation, Greed-based renunciation, fear-based, or, 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 or misery-based. Let's say we have a death in the family and we go for crematory. What do I, ex what, what kind of thought process goes through my mind? I just say, oh my God, look at this person walking, talking and all the thing and suddenly he just died and everything. Then this is no, 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 there is no surety about this living being and all the thing. We may die anytime. And that type of renunciation thought process comes to me. But when I come back home and start my daily routine activity, I forget about the renunciation thought process. Second thing with the greed. Greed means I have nothing right now. I'm a householder. I have problem making ends meet. I'm not able to fulfill my duties to support my family. So I say, you know what? Look at these monks. They have to do nothing. And the time comes, lunch time, dinner time, they go out to people's place, get the food and everything. So I can also become monk. And so that's why I don't have to worry about earning money and my food is secured. Those kind of thing is renunciation due to greed. That is also wrong. But renunciation from knowledge base, which we are talking right now, you just go through the knowledge aspect. You understand who am I, what's my true nature, and all kind of thing when I know it. I understand my true nature. And then I try to go within. I get internal renunciation. Automatically, it follows with the external renunciation. And that's a true form of renunciation. Renunciation practice simply to gain worldly pleasure is not right. I'll become monk and I'll get everybody will worship me and everything. That kind of a worldly pleasure is not right. This is showing presence of imperceptible form of painful meditation. Arthra Dhyan. This is the Dhyan. You know, there, there, there are four types of meditations described in the literature. One is called painful meditation. And second thing is uh, called Draudra Dhyan, means uh, uh, anger, etc. types of um, meditation. Third thing is uh, the I mean, uh, Dharma Dhyan, religious meditation. And fourth is uh, a pure form of meditation. So those are the things when we come to those chapters, we'll talk more about it. But when you have worldly, when you are, you are practicing renunciation because you expect the fruits of your play, fruits of your labor in the future in the form of some worldly gaining, then it's called 
painful meditation, Arthra Dhyan. Arthra Dhyan, painful meditation. To expect pleasure in the future life is a, is a form of painful meditation. Over here, I'm getting worldly gain, I'm going to get it, or I'll get a future life, will be better life when I do lots of upas, etc. Right now, it's a form of painful meditation, and that means you end up binding karma with that stage. Expecting pleasure in current and future life is a form of greed also. And that is also part of the Arthur Dhyan. And last one, with unstable mind and with social fear, practice of conduct is not called monkhood. My mind is unstable. I don't know what I'm doing. With the societal fear, I end up doing certain type of conduct. That's not called monkhood. True monkhood will be internal purity. And internal purity brings external uh, renunciation. And that's a true form of renunciation. A man standing at the bank of the river, if, uh, on the river bank, this guy is standing. He thinks that he has accepted the water. Or on the second thought, he says, oh, he gave up the, uh, uh, he gave up the water. He thinks that, oh, I accepted water. No, no, I gave up water. That kind of thought process here. But in fact, he has not accepted or rejected water. This is the belief, altered belief to say that, oh, I, 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 I accepted water, I rejected water, or I stopped water, etc., etc. type of thing. That means it's a wrong faith. Water is doing its own flowing work, and you are just simply standing at the bank of the river you are not doing anything different, except having wrong faith. Now, I'm going to three dimensional figure and over here, length, width, and height. Length, width, and height means if we just multiply three, it will be a solid, solid cube, cube. Solid, 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 there's nothing else can enter. So in this, suppose we soul, if you consider soul as a three dimensional figure, then on the one axis is an infinite time unit that pass by and that will be passing in the future. In the bit, I put innumerable space point of the soul substance. And on the Z axis, I put infinite attribute. So time infinite, infinite attributes and innumerable space point. Innumerable space point are so much over here and infinite attributes are so many more. But those infinite attributes, they remain in this innumerable space point and they don't bother with each other. You guys are born and brought up here. You may not understand what, what the life in India and everything. When we used to grow up, we had a, we have five brothers and then my grandpa had a stroke. So in one corner of the house, he was occupying space. Parents were there and one brother was married and everything. And, and all these people were living in two room, not two bedroom, two simple room. That kitchen will become somebody's bedroom and that above another room will become the bedroom for everybody to sleep at during night time, all kind of thing. Here, innumerable space point an infinite attribute. They live there, they live peacefully. There is no overcrowding. There is no hassle. There is no problem. And it becomes an extreme solid structure so much that is called soul is called embodiment of knowledge, means embodiment of attribute, embodiment of knowledge, means it is so, so solid, means nothing, nothing for outside can enter. Inclination of attachment has no entry into the soul substance. This is no end. So in my soul, in me as a soul, inclusive of attachment cannot enter. So when I'm, when, when it's a pure state is there, 
eternal soul substance is pure, attributes are pure, and when my, my modes are also becoming pure, then in that purity, no impurity can ever enter. Souls, substance attribute modes have no entry of alien object. Means soul has, soul has a substance, has infinite attribute and modes. They have no entry of any alien objects within the pure state. Within a pure state, nothing can enter. Spouse, family, money, all are alien objects and separate from the soul. Soul has no part of those things. Soul simply accepts inclines of attachment towards such alien object. These alien objects are there and I bring my attention to the alien object and that's why inclines of attachment is generated within me transiently. It's not my true nature. Rag is not my true nature. That too, not in substance or attribute, but happens in this, this influence of attachment does not enter in the substance or attribute, but only that changes occurs in the modes only, in also, also occurs transiently. So it is not entering the soul substance. Therefore, one has to give up influence of attachment state, influence of aversion state, and infatuation from his modal state. <clears throat> I should give up all those things. You are going to ask me a question, how to give up all this thing? Is there any technique to give it up? Simple technique. I'm drawing a line over here, this small line, and I say, Nimisa, come and without erasing this line, make this line small. Can I erase? No. Can I touch this line? No. How can I make it small? Then you said, oh, uncle, what a big deal. You draw a big line next to it. So this line is automatically a small line. So how do I remove, remove influence of attachment and influence of aversion in future state, etc.? Then I go and increase my purity of the soul over here. Then I go on this side, then these things becomes minuscule. This becomes less important. There's no, no importance of those things. Remember, if it's small child, a child is extremely attached to, to her doll and cannot sleep without doll. And if she has gone to somewhere else, somebody else's place, friend's place for sleep and everything, and she forgot the doll, then daddy will have to go at middle of night to drop that dirty, ugly looking doll so that the daughter can go to sleep. I'm going to give you the same doll today and you just throw it in garbage. You said, what is this nonsense? Well, you are not able to sleep without this. Oh, that time passed. I don't care about it. Similarly, when you have certain thing, it's so important in your life right now. But when you think about eternal soul substance, there's no value of any kind at all. Value diminishes exponentially. So those are the things we have to keep in mind. And that is the right beginning. When I start doing that one, when I bring the attention to the eternal soul substance, means anger, deceit, ego, greed becomes small and minuscule and less important. That's the right beginning for the soul. Now, over here, we are just starting. Let's see, we have time to go through this new chapter. Well, also 9, 9.30 already. So we are going to stop over here. If there's any question, we can take question. And uh, hopefully next week, we should be finishing this stanza. You know, but there's so much more in this stanza. I mean, if we are just simply wants to didactically go through it, we can go through it very quickly, all the stanza. But that means there's no value. It has no value. Important thing, whatever you hear, whatever you learn, whatever you grab, grasp, and keep reciting yourself and meditating on it, then it becomes second nature. And that's a whole aim for the whole class like this. 
It doesn't make a difference how many people are there. In, to me, in front of TV screen, I'm only on the computer screen, I'm only the guy. So it doesn't make a difference. But you understand that is very important. And you get the extract out from the stanza. And that's a whole aim that we want to achieve. Any question? Okay, if there is no question, then we can just do the uh, closing, okay? Jin Swarupa Samaja Bina Pamyo Dukha Anan Samaja Mute Padanamo Sri Sada Guru Bhagavan Parama Purusha Prabhu Sada Guru Parama Jnana Sukhada Jene Apyumbanani Stene Shada Pranam Dehachata Jene Dasha Varate Dehati Tegnani Nacharanama O Vandana Agani Agnani Nacharanama O Vandana Agani Jai Jinendra. Jai Jinendra, thank you, good bye. Thank you. Jai Jinendra.